Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today we are here for another pen review and today we will review a pen from an iconic American brand, Esterbrook. And let's take a look. The pen comes inside this uh, like craft paper sleeve and inside the sleeve there is a fabric box which is quite interesting with a magnetic closure it opens and you can see America's original reborn and then a paper with the history of Easterbrook um, ink cartridge and the pen let's close this take all this away and let's talk about the pen what I'm showing you now is the Esterbrook ST in cobalt blue color. First thing that I have to say is that this color is really beautiful and the material is, this acrylic is very very beautiful. Now, this is a typical cigar shape pen with a simple clip, like a, a blade that is very very springy, very easy to use and it says there Esterbrook and nothing more. More than that is just the beautiful resin material. When you unscrew the pen, I unscrewed a lot of times, you don't need to do that. Let me sh show you. One turn, one turn and a half more or, more or less, and you have this pen. And the pen has one ring there, another ring there, just in the beginning of the section. It has a nib that is that has laser printed Esterbrook 1858, and then the F from F nib. The usual Yovo feed, I think. And these unscrews, this ring that is before the, the threads of the barrel is from the barrel and this other ring is from the section and you have um, a metal threads on the section that go into metal threads inside the barrel. So this may be nice to avoid some wear just in one, one side. It has an Esterbrook proprietary, it's not proprietary, it's an Esterbrook converter, but it is actually an international size converter. And you can also fit two regular international cartridges inside or one big one um, international cartridge. So the pen is very, very beautiful, as I told you about some important stuff that this pen has. It has no other engraving be besides this Esterbrook that is uh, like printed in white and it is slightly engraved, yes. The cap, too close, if you do this, it doesn't close. You need to press it down, so I guess this allows for some seal. I think the inner cap of the cap has a spring that forces it to go towards the section of the pen and makes a perfect seal. About the, the, the comfort in writing, this is a quite a big pen with a thick, it is large enough, this section. The threads aren't, maybe they are just a little sharp and they step up a little bit from the from the section, but I find the way that I hold it, it does not matter to me. And the pen is nice, I would say, in terms of comfort in writing. I would use this pen and post it. If you want, you can try to post. It posts, but first, it's not very secure, as you can see. It comes off. I think it will also... Um, make some wear here if you post it and you force it down so it isn't it doesn't post secure and it posts too high 
so this will be very back heavy and not comfortable at all to use. The thing about this pen that I find, and I like when pens pay some kind of tribute to their old uh, products of that brand. I have to say that this brand, I have here too, I don't know much about Easterbrook history and other models, but I have here two vintage Easterbrook models and I would say they have nothing in common with this modern one. No really many rings on, on the pen, uh, they have blind engraving here and here, this one does not, it has Esterbrook very big there. So uh, I, I feel something about this pen that I usually don't feel about many pens, is that like if this pen lacked some kind of a personality. Uh, you look at this pen and it is nice, it is beautiful, and it is an Esterbrook, but it could be something else, you, you don't really know. But maybe this is my way of seeing it. It's not this size of pen, but there is a bigger size of this pen that takes a different section, that and that thing, yes, it's a really nice thing, it's not for this pen, for others, it takes a section that will accept I don't know if I can take this out. No, I can't. Uh, where you can take the nib units from the older Esterbrook pens. They were sold and you could even buy separate nibs for different tasks. Okay, this one comes out. And you could put these into the new pen, but not this size. It is an oversized one. This one is just what it is. So, it is a beautiful pen, I have to say that again, the material is very, very nice. But I think, I think what I'm missing here is two things. One, one of two things, it misses or the innovation or it misses the, the tribute to the older models or to the history of the brand. I think that this pen, I just have, they're not the same, um, they are not completely comparable, but this is a Conklin, all American, and it's also blue pen, so, but this one is a much brighter blue, and you can see there are some similarities, however this pen is much larger, but the overall shape is quite similar, so I would say they are more comparable. Another pen that I would say it's quite comparable also is the Montegrappa Elmo, and the Montegrappa Elmo has a big difference, it also has the little ring there, and it has the white engraving, so there are, this one has some similarities, however in this case the cap is flush to the barrel, which makes it to have a larger step here, but then it doesn't have a step from the, the threads to the barrel. But I would say it's kind of similar, and today Montegrappa makes a lot of this pen. And, for example, this pen really is an homage to an old uh, model. And this also is... This one... I think it... Don't get me wrong, I think this is a really nice design. I really like the look of the resin, I just don't know how to fit this pen into the overall design of the brand. Maybe I should know more of Esterbrook, but they don't are that usual here in Portugal. So I'm not saying this is a bad pen, I'm just saying I don't totally get why they came up with this design. About Comparison with other pens, we have here the Lamy LX Ruthenium and the Parker Centennial Dufold and the Esterbrook is bigger than both those pens. When we uncap all of them, we will see that the Esterbrook is of the same size of the Parker Centennial Dufold and just a little bit shorter than the Lamy. 
this pen takes a number 8 steel nib and for that number 8 steel nib and this beautiful resin you have to pay 195 euros although it's nice I think it is it may be a little high and we are talking of a pen that is not on the luxury on the luxury market like Montegrappa or Montblanc or something like that I'm not sure if this is not a little bit too high for I would say quite a regular pen almost 200 euros okay this is all about the overall aspect of the pen let's go to the writing sample and here we are with the pen and paper and let's see how this pen writes first I have to say again that the pen is very comfortable to hold this is nice of the size of the pen is really nice I really I really enjoy this pen in terms of the the, the comfort in writing so this is the Esterbrook ST Cobalt Blue. One thing I have to say is it has a fine nib. However, let's focus. It has a kind of a stubbish end of the nib. I don't know if this is regular, I would say this was something then maybe at the store at the uh, Apple Boom sent me this pen for review so maybe this is some adjustment they made at the store and because some particular reason maybe it was not sold or it got returned by the by the seller and I had this for for review so this is a little bit stubbish for my preferences now the ink that is inside is the graph von Faber Castell violet blue and the paper is the usual Rodia dot pet and let's take a look at the writing of the pen so first the downstroke with no pressure the side stroke and you can see that this is much heavier than that one that's why I say this is a stub nib if we do this you can see the line variation but I think you get and if you write within an angle you can see that here the line variation is the line is much thicker here than there so this really is a stubbish nib about the behavior of the nib and feed despite this nib is not my favorite because of the the way it is cut not about the nib quality just about the, the grinding I would say that this nib is really good and the feed keeps up with the ink flow and the pen writes really well and wet for a fine nib it really is wet this ink is very light it's not it's the ink not the pen so this is quite it does what is meant to to do it writes well about line variation you have the natural line variation because this is a stub nib if you want to press it harder you will have a little bit more of ink and just a little bit more of the line very of width line width and if you write upside down it will write a little bit finer but scratchy it's not pleasant and it will eventually uh, dry out so not a good experience forget about it about the wetness you saw it writes well so what I have to say I have to say that I think this pen is a little expensive for what it is however I think I would 
be able to pay this kind of price for the material and the quality of the pen if I saw that this was something that was going to be coherent with the rest of the of the life of the brand. If I saw this was the concept of the brand in terms of shapes and designs. As it is, it seems like um, just an experience, an experiment, uh, one design that they came out with and then the next designs maybe they will be something else. So there is nothing wrong but I would pay this kind of money if, the, if this was inspired in some older product, I would say that. So, this is all I had to show you. I hope you liked the video. I have to thank Mr. Appleboom for sending this pen for review. It will be sent back soon. And thank you all for watching the video. I hope you like it. If you did, please press the like button and don't forget to subscribe to be sure that you receive the notifications when I post a new video. And I usually post in alternate days, so lots of videos from me to see every week. And this is all for today. See you next time. Bye.